I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we have a great estate for golf lovers in Rye. We're in Harlem overlooking Central Park at the super chic apartment of a rising star in the design world. And we're at this unique home in Bronxville, New York designed by one of Frank Lloyd Wright's protégés. But before all of that, we are in Corona, Queens for an exclusive look at the perfectly preserved mid-century home of legendary musician Louis Armstrong. The design of this house went through various changes and in many ways it does look like a museum in the sense of every room is a different exhibit. Welcome to Open House NYC. We have a great show for you today and we are getting started in Corona, Queens at the perfectly preserved home of Satchmo himself, Louis Armstrong. Today, some four decades after his death, it remains a pristine time capsule for design lovers and jazz aficionados. Take a look. Hello, my name is Highland Harris. Welcome to Louis Armstrong's House Museum here in Corona, Queens, New York. Louis Armstrong was among the most important figures of the 20th century. He took this music that was emerging around New Orleans and he spread this message of jazz around the country and then around the world. He was the first jazz musician to have a number one hit and the last jazz musician to have a number one hit. Louis Armstrong moved here in 1943. He was on the road about 300 days a year and his wife refused to live this kind of a lifestyle so she bought this house without Louis knowing anything about it and she sent him a message saying we now have a home. He took a cab here and Lucia was waiting for him at the door and she walked him through the house room by room and he fell in love with it. He stayed here until he passed away in 1971. The house as you see it is exactly the way she left it when she passed away in 1983. When Lewis moved here, all of these houses, including this one, had a wooden clapboard. Lucille decided to brickface this house. Now, Lewis was incensed that Lucille would do something like that because he put a lot of his energy into blending in with the neighbors as opposed to standing out. He knocked on all the doors on this side of the block. He offered to brick face this entire block. The design of this house went through various changes and in many ways it does look like a museum in the sense of every room is a different exhibit. As we walk through the house, we're gonna enter into the living room. This living room really represents Lewis's travels. So you'll see gondolas from Italy, dolls from Japan, and various artwork. You'll see a portrait of Lewis here. This portrait was based off of a picture that was in Vanity Fair magazine. Louis Armstrong was the first African-American in Vanity Fair. This is in the mid-1930s. This was Louis's favorite portrait of himself. And this picture would move throughout the house as the house went through various changes. The living room was a room where the Armstrongs socialized. So we have documents of them throwing parties here, various recordings of Lewis telling jokes in the living room. <laughs> now right on the table, you'll see a Bible that was given to Lewis by a friend of his, a trumpet player. That Bible had a lot of significance to Lewis because Lewis, as a child, had worked for a Jewish family named the Karanovskis. They gave Lewis his first job, and with that job, he bought his first trumpet. So Lewis always wore a Star of David for the rest of his life. One of the most noticeable things in this entire house is the wallpaper. Ceilings, walls, each closet has its own wallpaper pattern. This is a hemp kind of a wallpaper, original as the way Lewis and Lucille left it. In the summertime, when it gets very hot, you can actually smell their smoke sometimes come right out of that wallpaper. we're gonna pass Lewis's bathroom. Gold-plated fixtures and even pipes, mirrored from ceiling to floor. What a feast for the eyes, and there's even more to explore just after the break. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. Now let's catch up with Highland Harris for more stories about the design and legacy of the Louis Armstrong House in Corona, Queens.
Without question, the kitchen is one of the most famous rooms in this house. This kitchen is a perfectly preserved late 60s kitchen that reflected the space age. Very influenced by the World's Fair, which was just a 15 minute walk from here. The blue cabinets are made out of wood, which surprises everybody when we notice that. It's almost a piano type finish. Those are piano door hinges and piano lid handles. This room reflects that Louis Armstrong did not see himself or his taste as a relic. One thing about the second floor that feels completely different than the first floor is that this is the Armstrong's personal space. Here the silver Mylar wallpaper almost looks like tin foil. Very bright, very reminiscent of the late 60s. This room has a lot of poignancy because Lewis passed away in this room in his sleep July 6, 1971 after a birthday party where he felt reinvigorated enough that he called up his manager and his doctor saying that he was ready to go back out on the road and start performing. Now we head into Lewis's den. In many ways, this is the highlight of the tour. He sat in this chair. He wrote one of his autobiographies. Here he entertained. His celebrity friends would sit in these chairs. His neighborhood friends would sit in these chairs. Lucille would say this room was sacred. It was off limits. This wall originally was covered in Lewis's artwork. He would take newspaper clippings and he would create collages that covered this entire wall. And when Lewis would travel, Lucille would rip these newspaper clippings down. She thought it was beneath a man of his age and stature to do this type of thing. So then Lewis began to put those collages on each one of these boxes, which he stored his tapes. Behind his chair, you'll notice the state-of-the-art recording equipment he would store his tapes in this cabinet right here. You'll see Lewis's actual handwriting where he did all the work for future historians. On each of these tapes, we have recordings of Lewis practicing, telling jokes, hanging out backstage. Sometimes he would put records on his turntable and then record his reaction to hearing the music for the very first time. So Lewis was an archivist. Within this house, after he'd passed away, they found over 700 of these personal two-hour reels. Outside the den here is the terrace. On warm, sunny days, Lewis and Lucille would sit here, and often Lewis would play trumpet out into the street to entertain the neighbors. Can you imagine walking by and hearing Lewis Armstrong playing trumpet one story above you? The longer I've worked here, the more I've been humbled by how Lewis Armstrong, who was known all over the world, had millions of dollars, chose to live in a working class neighborhood at the height of his fame, his peers were Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Nat King Cole. But Lewis chose to live in Corona, where his next door neighbor was a telephone operator. There were school teachers and janitors. When Lewis moved here, he felt like he had made it. I hope you enjoyed this look into the home of Lewis and Lucille Armstrong. It's a perfectly preserved piece of music and designed history. Stepping into that house is like stepping back in time. And if you want to check out that home, and you definitely should, go to their website, lewisarmstronghouse.org, for more information. Coming up after the break, we are in Bronxville at this Frank Lloyd Wright-inspired home. Welcome back. Now we are in my adopted hometown of Bronxville, New York to tour this mid-century hillside home. You know, this is the kind of place that constantly surprises, offering new perspectives when you turn a corner throughout its five and a half thousand square feet. Welcome to One Governor's Road in Bronxville, New York. I'm Kathleen Collins with Julia B. Fee Sotheby's. This Frank Lloyd Wright inspired home was built in 1950 by architect David Henkin. You can see that in the floor to ceiling windows throughout the home, bringing the outdoors inside and the prominent linear lines. With 5,500 square feet and multiple outdoor spaces, there's a lot to show you. So come on in, let's take a look. As you enter the home, you pass this soothing water feature. 
and it puts you in a wonderful frame of mind to view this masterpiece. This glass entry welcomes you into the home. It's a dramatic first impression and it gives you views to the indoors and the outdoors. It's also indicative of Frank Lloyd Wright's style to enter into a smaller space before going further into the home. When you walk into the sunken living room, you feel immediately at ease. With soaring 10 and a half foot ceilings, this exquisite built-in sofa, and a wood-burning fireplace with a stone surround. The stone, in fact, is the same stone that's used on the exterior of the home, thus tying the inside to the out, another example of Frank Lloyd Wright style. There's also this amazing deck. All of this making this room the perfect place to enjoy a night at home. This open area combines both the dining room and the kitchen. The dining room has a wall of windows that floods the room with natural light. And it features this lovely chandelier that bathes any evening in a romantic glow. And the open kitchen is absolutely pristine. It has a dark center island with seating for five and light quartz countertops. And it contrasts nicely with this dark custom millwork, all with a contemporary flair, making this a dream kitchen. The main suite of the home has an office, exercise room, and bedroom. One of the first things you notice in this room is a wall of windows, including this unique corner window. Right outside these windows is your very own private deck. It's a perfect place to unwind and enjoy all the interesting angles of the home. To top this space off, there is a sumptuous spa bath with a marble step-down tub that is nothing short of amazing. And only 15 miles from Midtown Manhattan, this magnificent property is a wonderful place to call home. Thank you for taking a look. Don't go anywhere, we have so much more ahead, including a golf lover's dream home in Rye and this chic Harlem apartment. Welcome back. Now we're in Harlem, New York at the chic minimalist apartment of rising design star Danny Arps. Her new home overlooks Central Park and she complemented this enviable location and iconic views with custom furnishings, sculptural pieces and unique art, along with organic touches for a truly personal home that reflects a stylishly curated life. Hi, my name is Danny Arps. Welcome to my home in Harlem. I specialize in commercial interior design, specifically startups. I'm known as a designer who defines a mood and aesthetic for her clients. I wanted the overall feeling of calm and airiness to hit you when you first walk in. I think a mirror in an entry is kind of a standard because everyone wants to make sure they have that last check before they leave for the day. I have it in the entry where you can drop your keys, drop your bag, and take in this incredible view of Central Park. Pretty much every piece I select had a sculptural quality to it, but also a functional quality to it. So that was maybe the underlying concept beyond kind of this cloudy airiness. So once I had this beautiful sculptural asymmetrical sofa, I knew that was gonna kind of define the other elements of the room. Uh, the chair I'm actually sitting in now, I just wanted it to be unique and have its own voice, but also kind of speak to the sofa, which is asymmetrical. When choosing the accent pieces, I knew that even though they were black, they had to still feel light. And so the shape and the silhouette was incredibly important as well. The centerpiece of the dining room is also a table I designed. I love it because the tapered leg lend to that sculptural quality that I love, but it's extremely sturdy and extremely stable, so it's functional as well. The black leather chairs tie in with those black accents to ground the space, but the white oak frame keeps it light and airy. The ladder is 
something that I've had for all of my apartments for the past eight years. It's actually from my dad. This light by itself, it just kind of floats there. It looks like it's suspended in air and it looks like a piece of art. The bedroom I wanted to feel like I was in some sort of boutique hotel in some fabulous destination. The bed, the armoire don't match, but they go together. And that was something that was super important to me. I didn't want matching sets in general. And I also found these gorgeous side tables, which literally are kind of interpreting this cloud-like theme because the shape of them is kind of bulbous and textural that they kind of mimic the look of a cloud. The bed is rattan. Rattan has this beautiful airy quality to it because it's perforated. The armoire is a mix of white oak and stained ebonized oak. It's probably the only piece that I purchased that is a bit more rectilinear, whereas most of the shapes throughout are kind of curvy and feminine and have this very kind of buoyant quality to them. When I wake up in the morning and I feel like I'm kind of floating, then I feel like I actually achieved the concept I was going for. My apartment is a conceptual piece. And though it's a small space, I really think the theme came through in a big way. Thanks so much for joining my tour. Coming up just after the break, a golf lover's dream home in Rye. We'll see you in just a bit. Welcome back. We are gonna close things out in Rye with this custom manor that is the epitome of style and sophistication. Situated right on the grounds of the Westchester Country Club, this stone and cedar home is filled with bespoke architectural details at every turn. And I know I say that a lot, but I really mean it. Take a look. Hi, I'm Chelsea Giorgio with Houlihan Lawrence. Welcome to Rye, New York. This modern manor is approximately 9,300 square feet with almost an acre of land. I can't wait to show you inside. You enter this home into a beautiful double-story foyer with a floating glass staircase. There is also beautiful Venetian plaster walls, white oak chevron floors, and this spectacular custom pendant. Bookending the space are floor to ceiling, steel windows and doors that allow natural light to come inside. But if you find the need for a little bit more privacy, let me show you something cool. Privacy glass. This generously proportioned sunken living room is a great place to entertain and relax. The focal point of the space is the custom fireplace with soapstone brick and a hammered metal surround and complemented with a white marble mantle. Sitting here, you can easily envision spending a fun evening surrounded by friends and family. And if your guests need a little drink, there's a beautiful custom bar with an onyx countertop. In here is another special architectural feature with coffered beam ceilings. But what's really unique about this space is the floor-to-ceiling steel-framed windows. It affords views of the beautiful grounds and allows natural light to flow in. This home is located on Westchester Country Club's golf course, and the kitchen views take full advantage of the setting. But it's the details in the interior of the space that really set the room apart. Starting with the center island, with a marble waterfall countertop, and matching backsplash, and the floor-to-ceiling windows in the adjoining breakfast room. This is a perfect place to prepare a spectacular meal or enjoy the views with a cup of coffee. There are five bedrooms in this home, and this is the principal bedroom. It features step ceilings, silk wallpaper, and floor-to-ceiling marble fireplace. But the real standout is this ensuite bath. Calcutta gold marble heated floors, a curbless shower, and a soaking tub with views to die for. This is the definition of a spa-like bath. But enough talk of the views, now let me show them to you. Out here is a whole nother world. This deck is over 2,500 square feet and is paved with Chinese granite. There's an outdoor kitchen with built-in barbecue, 
and plenty of space for multiple seating areas. There's also a beautiful linear glass enclosed fireplace. You can come out here to enjoy a nice meal with friends and family or simply to catch some sun. This is also a great place to admire the beautiful grounds that feel as though you're looking at a painting. I hope you enjoyed taking a tour of this modern manor with all of the newest amenities, yet timeless design. Thank you for coming along. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?